Hello, Sally. How are you doing today? Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> Actually, I should say, how are you doing in, in my new tomorrow that hasn't arrived yet? Because you're down there in Australia. That's right. It's a great day. You'll love it. <laughs> hey, congratulations on Transfigured Sea. You have come up with the most creative way to promote the, the beauty and the love and the atmosphere of the ocean without saying, this is a journalist's job. I'm going to talk like a journalist. No, you share a story. Yes, it's a story. It's been called Enchanting. It's a story of two women who live in the sea. And you probably say, how can they breathe underwater? Well, one of them, called Laura, finds a special conch shell on the beach. It's just like this one. Can you see that? Yeah. And... Uh, it's very beautiful, and she puts it in her pocket and keeps it with her, and it helps them breathe underwater. It directs them uh, to where they have to go from one ecosystem to the next, just like a GPS, and it gives them information about all the beautiful and amazing sea creatures that they meet, just like Wikipedia. You know, that's very interesting, the way that you, you just described that in the ecosystems that, we, that, that they meet, because a lot of people think it's just one giant ocean, when in fact there are many different layers and levels of an open sea. Oh, yes, definitely. There are, there are many different ecosystems just at the coast. There's the mangroves, the estuary, the rocks, the sandy beaches, and all sorts. And then, of course, when you get underwater, there's the shallow water, the coral reef, the um, deeper water, and Antarctic waters, which are different again. And then there are the deep waters that go down several kilometres. One of the things you put a lot... I was going to say, one of the things that you put a lot of focus on is the fact that it's authentic. You're being very transparent because you, you really do bring together the essence of what you've learned as a student. And now you're teaching us through through these paragraphs of a storyline. Yes, that's right. It's a, it's a story about the women whose relationship is a bit shaky. Mm -hmm. So they think that... Um, if they work on their own selves to uh, improve their own psychological makeups, that their relationship will get better. And it does. And um, while they're doing this inner exploration, they're also doing an outer exploration of the ocean and meeting lots of wonderful sea creatures in the process. So the book is nature writing, which means that the natural environment is given just as much attention as any other of the main characters in the book. And that's why it's kind of two, two books in one. Oh, I'll give you that right there, right there, because it is. Because, I mean, I, being a lover of the ocean, I, I do take it, you know, take it as the way that you're telling me the story of the ocean. But at the same time, I'm also in love the story of, of these two women that have come together to explore. I mean, you're right. It is two books in one. That's right. How did you keep them separated in the way of, you know, because when it comes to continuity, you've got to, you've got to stay true to it. Was it difficult to write like that? Was it two separate personalities inside of you, Sally? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't think I found it difficult because a lot of the things about the sea creatures, their shape, their form, their behavior, it often parallels behavior of human beings and so throughout the book the sea creatures were a parallel for the women and towards the end of the book that becomes very significant mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
a lot of our listeners have never been beneath the surface of the water. And, and that's one of those things that when I went down beneath the water, I, that changed my life forever. And, and that's what I like about this. When she goes into the water and she's able to breathe, you give us that, that atmosphere of, wow, now you can see what everything has always been written about. You can experience it yourself. Oh, yes. There's nothing like a coral reef, a healthy coral reef. Yes. With all its colors and textures and shapes. It's just a wonderful thing. And every minute the fish dart in from the other side and then some other fish, a different color, come from the other angle. And it's just amazing. And it's very sad that the Great Barrier Reef in Australia is dying. Mm. Um, the coral is bleaching, and that is because mainly of climate change. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I was going to ask you about yeah, that. Yeah, because, because um, with the extra CO2 in the atmosphere, that acidifies the water, and the coral can't tolerate that. And also the increase in temperature can't be tolerated by the smaller organisms in the sea, like the coral. Mm. And so that's why they're losing their colour and all the beauty is gone. Let me ask you a question when it comes to the coral in situations like that. Would you say that the coral today is the dinosaur of yesterday? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I do hope yeah, not. Yeah. I mean, because it, ju it just seems like nobody wants to really delve in and, and really bring out the true message of saving the coral. I mean, it's not on the conversations of, of so many people here in America. It's like, save the planet. What are you talking about? The, 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 their climate, it's out of control. What are you talking about? I mean, what is it like for you down there in Australia? You at least are embracing it, are you not? Oh, yes, a lot of people are aware of environmental issues now, which is wonderful, because when I first got interested many years ago, um, there was just a small group of us. But now most people are aware to some extent, which is great. They don't always know the best thing to do to help. Um, as far as the ocean goes, on my website... I have listed the threats to the ocean and I have listed things, that, practical things that we can do to help protect the ocean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my website is sallyannhunter.com. One of the things that, I, that, that really is weaved into this story, we have the, the, the story between the girls and we also have the story of the ocean. I mean, there are three main characters in this book that you put a lot of love and attention on. Yes, that's right. And um, there's a storm at one stage in the book, and that parallels the relationship between the women. They're yeah. going through a stormy stage of things. Um in fact, I could read you a poem if please. you would like I was, that. I was going to bring up the poetry. I was. I swear to you, I was going to bring it up. So, yes, please, I would like to hear it. Yes, because we love the ocean. We love the beautiful colors in the sea that change as the sky changes from turquoise to blue of different shades. But sometimes we don't like the ocean when it gets violent, for example. Now, Laura has a problem in her relationship with her mother, mm -hmm. and this poem is called Mother Sea, and it depicts the emotional problems between Laura and her mother. Mother Sea, Mother Sea rejected me, did not wash me into shore, did not cast me away with seaweed and shells. She threw me, jags, and lashed me repeatedly, 
picking me up and throwing me onto knife points. Shreds and tears became food for the teeth of shark. Mm. Already masticated, my sensual self was gone. Shreds of garment scattered in deeps under waves, sinking without form under weight of water, fading. Mm, mm, mm. You embrace that atmosphere, don't you? My goodness. You know, speaking speaking of the ocean changing, you also put a lot of focus on how the, the moonlight affects the ocean as well, that there is a connection there. And until I read about that, I didn't realize the moonlight had its own place in the story. Yes. Um, yes, it does. And also the sunlight. Yes. Um, the glitter on the surface of the ocean is similar to what Laura feels in her heart. It's as if two mirrors were opening in her heart and there was a lot of shining light. And on the first page of the book, Laura, the mother of the sea sprite, experiences that. And she... She talks to herself, she muses about the nature of the sea, and the sea is a whisper of emotion Mm -hmm. and a memory of intuition. Mm -hmm. It is a place of change. It is a dream. It is the fullness of the subconscious. Isn't this story pretty much what we all want to experience when we go to an ocean shore? We all want to be able to step into that ocean and become a part of that journey as well. Because I really felt like a child. I felt like an adult. I felt like an explorer. You you really plant that seed in saying, you look beyond the the pebbles of sand and step into the water. Yes, but there's life in the sand as well. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There's life everywhere, and life is pretty wonderful at resisting and being resilient. But we have to not hinder that process, but help it. Be part of nature and not opposed to it. In the story, are you Laura? Because I love how confident Laura is and how she expresses her true feelings. Yes, she is a poet and a biologist. And yes, I wrote all the poems in the book. See, it is about you then. (laughs) (laughs) Because, because, I mean, mean, you're writing about both characters and it's it's like you do it so elegantly and and so connected. It's like going, oh, my God, I love how she split these, these, you know, everything together here. And it's like, oh, just dive into it. Give me more. Give me more. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. Yes, well, people can obtain a copy of the book, Mm -hmm. Transfigured Sea, from my website. Uh, So that's sallyannhunter.com. And uh, they're able to find out about the different books I've written, including Transfigured Sea. And to uh, and to order a copy of of the book, either from myself or from Barnes and Noble or Amazon or from their local bookshop shop, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open. I live in a forest. I totally understand nature. I protect my trees. I protect my soil. And you're doing the same exact thing when it comes to protecting those open seas. Wow, that's wonderful. Yes, I read a book about a woman who lived in a forest. She loved the trees. Yes. Yes, yes. So please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Sally. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you.